first trick that we're going to learn today is correcting timing in the Cubase sample editor. Here I have a drum part that was played off time. Let's listen to it with a click. If I double click on the WAV file, it'll open in the sample editor. And then when I activate the warp sample mode, it'll allow me to correct the timing. When I zoom in here, I can see where the beats are in relation to the grid line. And then I can correct it by simply left clicking and dragging the WAV file. This creates what we call anchors. To remove one of these anchors, hold the shift key down and click on the timeline bar. I can go through here and fix all of my timing. It does it by stretching the audio. And now when I play it back, it should be right on time. If you're wondering how I zoom in and out by scrolling with my mouse on the timeline bar, you may have to go to Preferences, Editing, Controls, and select the value box to increment, decrement on left click and drag and then click apply. To take a WAV file and make it into a loop in Cubase will take three steps. First we'll cut our WAV file down to exactly one or two or four bars in length. Let's see how long this one is. It's just over two bars long, so I'll trim it down to exactly two bars in length. First, I shut off my snap to grid. This is the downbeat to my third bar, and so I'll want to cut it exactly there. That'll make my WAV file exactly two bars in length. Next, let's find out what the original tempo of this WAV file is. You'll need to activate your Snap to Grid, and then select Snap to Events. Select Warp Grid, and make sure Time Warp is activated. And then it allows you to change the tempo by dragging the grid line. And it'll snap onto the event, which is in this case the WAV file. And you'll see over here that the original tempo of the WAV file was 120 beats per minute. This is a two-bar WAV file, and it's taking up two bars in the grid. Step three, we'll be activating musical mode. Let's start by opening our pool window. Select the WAV file you'll be converting. Here we have a View Attributes drop-down window, and these attributes are the different parameters along this info bar. Let's select View Musical Mode. When you check the box, it'll take the WAV file and turn it into a loop. It's going to ask what our original tempo of our WAV file was, and we know that it was 120 beats per minute. Now if you speed up or slow down your tempo, the loop will speed up or slow down with it. Here the tempo is faster. And here it is slower. Cubase has a time warp function that lets you easily find the tempo of a recording. 
This is a little pitched loop I made for the demonstration. Let's see if we can count where the beats of this recording are. This recording is four bars long, and right here is the downbeat to bar two. Let's set our time warp tool to warp grid and activate it. We can actually drag the grid line for the downbeat of bar two into the appropriate place. Now our bars and beats on our grid should be in time with our recording. When we created a loop, the loop automatically stayed with the tempo of the song. If we sped up the tempo, the loop sped up, and if we slowed it down, the loop would slow down. Cubase lets you speed up or slow down a file offline. This loop is exactly four bars long, and we want to put it at the new tempo, which is 130 beats per minute. First, we enable Snap to Grid. Make sure it's set on grid mode and then come to your object selection tool and select sizing applies time stretch. Then when you grab the edge of the wave file and drag it out so it snaps to the bar line, it'll convert it offline which means it makes a new file at the new tempo and it's higher quality time stretching than doing it on the info bar. Likewise if the new tempo is quicker. Enable Snap to Grid, make sure it's set on Grid. Click on the Object Selection tool and choose Sizing Applies Time Stretch. Remember this WAV file is exactly four bars long. So I'll snap the end of it to the downbeat of bar five. And it creates a new WAV file at the new tempo. If you highlight this WAV file and make sure that your black info bar is showing, it displays the parameters of whatever you have highlighted, which in this case is this sample. It's showing me the start time, the end time, and the length. I can transpose the WAV file real time as it's playing back by inputting a new number here. Let me just quickly loop this. Now I can quickly and easily make a copy of this WAV file by holding the ALT key down as I left click and drag. It'll automatically make a copy of it and I could put these two at different pitches. The first one could be at the original pitch and the second one could be slightly lower. So now we're taking one WAV file and we're creating chord changes with it. Cubase is actually transposing it on the fly and playing the sample back lower than it's stored on the hard drive. In Cubase, there is also a higher quality way to change the pitch. Let's take this WAV file playback and put it back to zero. And now we do what's called pitch shifting. We highlight the WAV file and we go to Process, Audio, Pitch Shift. And we decide how much we want to lower the pitch by. Let's lower the pitch by five semitones. It'll take a few seconds to process, but what it will do is create a new sample at the new pitch. It's a higher quality transposition than doing it on the info bar real time. But doing it on the info bar is a great way to audition the new pitch. 